Our next speaker is a graduate student at Wayne State and challenges everyone to a pizza tossing competition after the show. Let's hear it for Rob Rob. Bunch of different stuff. But I just want to focus on commercial food today. If anybody in this room or any, knows anybody in this room that has a problem feeding himself, come see me after this program. I can help you guys find some resources. So I want to start off with our box of cereal. A $3 box of cereal. Oh, that's my uh, abominable snowman food pyramid right there. A $3 <laughs> box of cereal, 50 cents worth of grains in that cereal. Now, say the grains in that cereal increase twofold. So instead of your $3 box of cereal, it's now $3.50 a box of cereal. For most people in the developed world, this is not a huge issue. You're still going to buy that box of cereal, right? But for the majority of people, 40% of the people across the world live on less than $2 a day. So that $2 a day, now that's half of their money going towards nourishment. So half of that money going towards nourishment, that is exactly what most of the people in developing world nations live off of. 50% of their income is going towards nourishment. As opposed to Americans, who's only less than 15% of our money goes towards nourishment. Now, I know you guys may be thinking, that's wild, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money to be going on. The United States is one of the only nations that artificially prices our food below cost. Now China is doing the same thing. Because of this, farmers would rather let their grains rot in the field than ship them to developing nations. It's just more profitable for them to let those grains just rot in the field after they harvest them. So you guys may be thinking that's over the, over the oceans, over the river, through the woods, grandmother's house we go. But right here in our backyard, one out of six people is starving. I want to talk about the food system in our country. Starting with slavery. You guys may think we abolished that a long time ago. There are people still slaving over tomatoes. In Florida and in Italy, picking our tomatoes. Shackled when they sleep at night, and if they if they successfully escape, they are beaten. Now, for a nice informative app to find out more information about this, Angry Tomato. You can download it to your iPhone and find out who is using tomatoes that are uh, farmed from slaves. Now, a little bit further up on the food chain, laborers, people who pack, people who make your food, people who take your money at restaurants, make minimum wage, $7.50 an hour. Since 2008, since the recession began, 49% of the new jobs created in this new economy are low-paying jobs like this. It takes 60 hours a week to get up to the poverty line. Working 60 hours a week, that's not even benefits. You don't get any benefits from this. Now, collective purchasing power is something you hear all the time. These people working during my undergrad, I worked making food, do not get any benefits. They are labor. This is their labor percentage. Collective purchasing power, they take all their money and pool it together and save a lot of money. They have their own farms, own chickens, like KFC has their own chickens. David Novak, the CEO of Young Brands, makes $36,000 an hour. That is where collective purchasing power goes. It does not go to the people who are packing your food or making your food. It's going to the very top of this food pyramid. But there is a silver lining to all of this. Every year, people who are not accepting their food stamps, that money is taken and it is put into nutrition programs to educate 
people living in poverty in this country. It also goes to breastfeeding initiatives, and it goes to help and modernize the food chains in this country. Another really cool, oh, I'm out of time. Sorry, I get long-winded. That's all I have for you guys today. <laughs>